Hi, Professor Gassini here. In this component of the lecture, we'll be discussing simple representations of text. So specifically, we're going to be talking about how you represent text numerically. Now, well, why would you want to do that? Because if you want to apply any kind of statistical modeling paradigms to your data, a prerequisite is that that data is represented in a numerical format, a meaningful numerical format that you can then apply statistical operations to. Consider, for example, how you would take the average of a sentence without having a way of numerically representing that sentence. There's not a, an obvious way to do that, nor is there an obvious way to take a max or a min of a sentence. Well, one of the simple ways that you can go about representing text is through something called bag of words. Now, bag of words is just an incredibly simple technique to encode text as the presence or the count of n-grams in a vocabulary. So, for example, let's say we had the sentence there on the right, the dog is on the table. The bag of words representation for that within the vocabulary space, which Note also includes the word are, cat, and now, even though they don't show up in the sentence. The representation of that particular sentence, the dog is on the table, is one for dog, one for the word is, one for the word on, one for the word table, and one for the word the. Now notice that the word the in the dog is on the table shows up twice. There's more than one way you can encode a sentence as a bag of words representation. You can either encode it, as I mentioned, based on the presence of the words, or you can encode it based on the count of the words or the n-grams. Now, when we compute a histogram of word frequencies, we're implicitly creating a bag of words representation. Think back to the spam filter example that we spoke about in the last component of this lecture series. We took the words from the messages, we created some histograms out of those words, or we counted them. Well, effectively, what we were doing was we were assigning an index to each of the words and then summing up the incidents that we saw at those particular indices. And so bag of words is effectively what we intuitively do when we want to do things like count words. Now, what's useful is that once we have the sentences, or a set of sentences cast to a numerical form, such as I'm shown there on the right-hand side, we can now conduct mathematical operations on them. You could, for example, take the average of the second column there to get the average of cat, the word cat. Or you could even take an average across all three sentences to figure out what the properties, the statistical properties, for instance, are of the average sentence in a corpus. But there are some things to be careful of when you're using a bag of words representation, and that is that the order of the terms is lost. So consider, for example, the bag of words representation I've shown there on the bottom right hand side. The cat shows up once, is shows up once, now shows up once, on shows up once, table shows up once, and the shows up twice. With that particular bag of words representation, I could construct the sentence, now the cat is on the table, and I could equally validly construct the sentence, the table is on the cat now. And there's no way of going from this representation, which is the bag of words, to these representations that may have created this bag of words representation. That's worth noting here because if a classification task or some other paradigm that you need to work on is going to be using a bag of words representation and the order of the terms might matter, you might have to specifically engineer that into your bag of words representation before uh, running a classification paradigm, for example. So a simple way if you do need to take advantage of the order of words is to increase the n-gram size of what you put in the bag, right? So, or have the bag contain a variety of n-gram sizes. For example, we don't have to 
take the sentence, the cat is on the table, shown here on the right hand side, and only break it up into its unigrams when we're creating the bag of words representation here. We could break it up into its unigrams, but then also into its bigrams. So the cat could be one bigram, um, cat is is another, is on is another, the table is another, on the is another, is another one that's not shown here. The key to using a bag of words correctly is to think carefully about your n-grams or skip-grams or another way of representing the language so that what enters the bag of words will respect the properties that you'll need for your downstream classification tasks.